Okay. Shall we start? Let's start. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you saw the morning session, you might remember, but so I'm going to repeat myself a little bit, but that's okay. Um, if I repeat myself too much, Carrie will give me a little elbow, a little elbow, and then we'll move on. Um, so thank you for joining us, for taking the time. We appreciate it. Um, my name is Kim Downey. I'm the VP of Supply Chain and Product Management here at Fusion, and Carrie McKean, who is a bit of a one woman show, and she is our product manager for all of our categories here at Fusion. So today we're going to talk about fusion engineered hardwood flooring. Hardwood flooring being still the most coveted flooring surface, even with all of the advances in technology that have increased the realism of wood visuals in other categories of manufactured products like laminate and vinyl, nothing can still truly compare with the natural beauty of hardwood. And we can't resist an opportunity to talk about it. So um, just for housekeeping, we will have an opportunity at the end of the session for questions. So if you have any, please send them in and our team will make sure they get answered. If we can't answer them, we'll get back to you with an answer when we when we figure it out. OK. So this is something I always like to start with because I think our marketing department did a phenomenal job at really um, giving some emotion to to how we feel about product. Um, the details are in our design. We believe that we set the stage for your home. We do this by giving our floors a personality, creating an emotional connection between you and your home to use as a canvas to unleash your creativity. We are fusion and this is our story. I just love that statement. Yeah, so I, I start all product presentations with that. Um, so a bit about who we are. Uh, most of you know this already. Um, but I always have to remind not just everyone else, but ourselves that product is who we are. Um, and we can't we can't let that opportunity to go by without talking about it. Um, from the top down in our organization, we are a product company. We live and breathe product all day, every day, even sometimes at night, um, whether we want to or not. Right? Of course, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We not only believe that product is the lifeblood of our industry, but we walk the talk in every facet of our organization. We work really hard, Carrie and I, as part of the product team, we work really hard as um, to inspire that passion for product in all areas of our business, in all functions of our company, whether it is in the warehouse and customer service and our sales team and in our own product and uh, supply teams as well. At Fusion, we approach product sourcing a little bit differently than traditional distribution. Um, Carrie and I have been in traditional distribution, uh, whether in the flooring industry or other home products for quite some time. Um, and we do operate differently here at Fusion and it's something we're very proud of. Rather than buying what manufacturers have to offer, we develop every element of the product design and the specification of the product. And then we search the world for the best manufacturing partner to produce the Fusion floors you've come to know and hopefully love. So Fusion Hardwood, some of you may have seen um, some videos that we've done previously um, and heard us speak about Fusion Hardwood. Um, and it's a category that we, we are very close to. It's part of our identity. Um, you know well that hardwood flooring is in our blood. It's part of our identity, it's our anchor product, and it's the product that we are most known for the breadth and depth of our collection. But what you may not know is that we actually develop our products for the Canadian and North American market, no off the shelf purchasing from factory lines or colors. Um, we have a product development team who is now upwards of pushing eight people um, from our CEO and owner um, to a team that we have offshore as well. Uh, we work with manufacturing partners all over the world to develop and fine tune every nuance of, nuance of the individual product and color until it is exactly what we're looking for from raw material, selecting grade, um, defining technical standards, working with finished producers even to find exactly the right colors and textures and performance to ultimately producing and shipping that fusion engineered hardwood product. So why wood? Um, one of the many benefits of wood, there are many, um, probably too many for us to squeeze into a 45 minute presentation, but <laughs> one of the many benefits of wood flooring is that when installed and maintained properly, they're the only, it's the only flooring option that can last for hundreds of years. In fact, there are documented wood floors in Europe that date back more than five centuries because wood is one of those flooring types that can be maintained and restored to its original appeal after decades of wear and use. The wear and tear, for lack of a better phrase, 
we call it patina, even though we have a collection named patina, uh, but it actually enhances the natural beauty of the product, unlike manufactured products who might show signs of scratching and, and wear through. The other reason is wood is available in so many endless options. So including all different species, widths, thicknesses, shapes and sizes, and even different, different levels of hardness and, and dimensional stabilities, which um, makes it useful in various applications. So why engineered wood? Um, obviously, the people in our industry have felt this change over time, where especially in Canada, we were a solid market for many, many years. Um, and that shift began probably 20 years ago um, to shift towards engineered floor, engineered hardwood flooring. And there's lots of good reasons for that as well. Um, it's real wood flooring, so it's not, uh, we don't manufacture it. The, the veneers, the face layer, the important part that you see, the visual that you see when the floor is installed is real wood flooring. But instead of a solid piece of wood from top to bottom, it's made using several layers of wood veneers or lumber core that are bonded together using adhesives. The top layer is what determines the species of the floor. That's the visual, that's what we, that's what we feel and see every day. <clears throat> the wear layer is, um, another word for top face layer, face layer, lamella, veneer, there's so many words that mean that same thing. The layers are bonded to other layers using adhesive um, and the thickness of the finished product, they can range from three eighths to three quarters. We don't do a lot of three eighths in our market um, and Fusion has something to offer in all of those thicknesses as well. <clears throat> Uh, engineered wood flooring is significantly more dimensionally dimensionally stable than solid wood, and it can be installed above or below. I don't know how many of you have um, solid hardwood in, I have some in my cottage, as an example. It's been there for 30 years, and between winter season when we go and summer season when we go, the product looks different. Sure. So because it, you know, is so sensitive to um, humidity and temperature, that there is some change in the product that doesn't really happen as much with engineered wood floor. So in terms of certain climates like Canada, it makes perfect sense. Beyond the beauty factor inherent in all wood floors, three of the biggest factors are yield. So you take less raw material, less harvesting of logs to create the same square footage than solid flooring. So it does have a bit of a green story there as well. Even though yes, you are har harvesting, the yield is so much better. Climate performance I discussed and price value. So there is a real price value um, conversation to be had, especially when you can produce wide and long, really beautiful pr products in engineered. There's three different, uh, well, sorry, there's two typical standard layered core products. There's the three layer core or there's multi-layer plywood. Really the differences are visual, the difference are Installation related, as far as performance and quality, there's virtually no difference. One tends to be more of a European style and multi-layer is more traditional, but they both perform the same way. One of the key differences is with regards to installation. With solid, sorry, the multi-layer or plywood core, you can nail it or cleat it. That's basically the key difference versus the solid core has filleted gaps. If you can see on this slide, there's a tiny little looks like an air hole that's by design and that's to help maintain stability but sometimes those fillets go throughout the entire um plank so uh, in order to ensure uh trouble free installation or even the quietest floor the recommendation for three layer or solid core is what we refer to it at is to staple and all that is is it gives twice the chance of a full mechanical attachment from the plank to the subfloor. And in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Fusion product, we actually have both right. in, our, in our assortment. Um, you know, not necessarily by design, but because the manufacturing partners that we use, um, we find the right product to make the, the right factory to make the right product. And yeah, yeah some are some other, and right. some and others. And it also allows us some flexibility to offer different thicknesses. Um, but stability, sort of everything else is good. Another key difference is certifications. We talk a lot about CARB2 and CANFER. That's a requirement for plywood core. Why? Because there's more adhesives used in the construction of it. So it's layered and pressed and heated. Whereas floor score tests more than other, more than just formaldehyde, and it's more of a blanket uh, certification for all woods. But you will, and CARB2 and uh, CANFER, are not tested on 
three layer solid core. It's just the fact. So if you're looking for both, understand that's a reason why it's not on all products. It depends on this construction. Right. And then the other key question is where layer thickness? Does it really matter? Not really. For performance, three mil and four mil is definitely a premium product and it's more beautiful. And there's a few reasons why it's I think you're gonna talk better, about which I'll talk to later. But later. as far as performance and beauty and visual, there's all there's it doesn't truly matter. So different cuts. Um, I know we're doing a bit of a lead up here um, just to make sure that you know we understand and you understand. We help understand what the difference is in the product, you know, what things affect um, stability, visual, and cost. Um, so the three different cuts for the veneer are sawn cut, sliced, and rotary peeled. And there's a difference in stability, stability being um, the highest in the sawn, um, changes in visual. So you can see the little pictures of the graining on your screen. So you can see that difference in grain pattern effect that you get between those three cuts. And rotary peel, I know it's the least costly. Um, I don't want to say cheap because none of our none, hardware product is not cheap. Um, you're certainly getting that same beauty, but seeing a rotary peel product being manufactured in a factory is the coolest thing because you're literally peeling a log. So it looks really, really cool. And the waste, there's virtually no. Yeah, very waste. high yield. Um, right. And it, uh, you still get that beauty of the grading pattern coming through. Grading. Yeah. Grading, grading, grading. This is an interesting one. Um, Carrie's going to show you some pictures that talk about variation between grading. Um, grading going from A through F um, and select and better. There's lots of words that get described to or get thrown around to describe the character, the knots and the color. Um, so it's not just about knots in a product from A to F. Um, it's there's color variation, there's character variation, there's there's texture variation, and that's why we have a scale, which Carrie's going to explain to you for what the grading is. Um, and we have a product assortment that represents um, everything across this, right. this spectrum. Yeah, and this is an example of some AB grades, a, the different grades and how we classify it. If you can see, there's a it's like a dial, low, moderate, strong and intense. And that's our way to kind of communicate the actual grading, how we classify it. Because one of the challenges is in the market is these are based on, this is a luxury wood flooring valuation. And how this comes is we our AB grade might not be the same as a competitor's AB grade because our AB grade may be a true 50-50 split between A and B, and A being the cleanest and clearest, almost select and better. So that's why we've taken it to the low, moderate, and to kind of take what the grading is and translate it to what to expect. And it's really just to help manage expectations and understand what they're looking at. So as you can see, the uh, as you get further down in the alphabet or further down in our level of one to four, you'll see that there's a few more knots. Some of them are larger knots. There's different fill lines or sap lines. It's just to help explain the product. And yeah, and then we use the same thing with color variation. With We sell a ton or one of our true, um, rustic, what we do, yeah, best and rustic and characters. And what one of the things Fusion does best is we have some very beautiful natural collections with natural colors, smoked colors. All of those enhance the different variation between planks. So that's the importance of color Whereas traditionally, a lot of wood was stained, more dark stained, and it's very easy in some cases to kind of just paint over some of the variation with regards to color. But we have more color variation because it's mostly in its most natural state, and those are the most popular colors. And certainly, today. those light natural colors have made grading an even bigger conversation. Exactly. Too, right? Yeah. So just keep that in mind when selling. If our cell sheets and our documentation and these grades are on our labels show intense understand that what they're getting could be some first partially filled lines lots of variation in color lots of variation in texture it truly is intense but the quality is far far the finish and all the other elements come from the manufacturing quality it's got nothing to do with if it's better or not it's surely visual and yeah, appearance. Visual. 
So overall thicknesses of the plank. Um, again, we're getting giving you a bit of a summary here, and Carrie is going to go into more specifics about the Fusion Collection. Talk about a couple of recent um, introductions that are feature products in each thickness as well. Just to, once we get to the very specific product section. Um, but overall thicknesses, again, the, the thickness of the wear layer can go, can be from 0 0.6 millimeters, which is very, very thin, up to four millimeter. There are larger, but that those are the most common. Um, the total thickness of finished products being three eighths to three quarters. Most commonly, we don't do a lot of three eighths in the Canadian market. Um, but total thickness of the product, it's really a cost value question and the best fit for the space, especially in a remodel where product is new product is butting up to existing because you may not be renovating the entire home. Um, but in, and in general, there is a perception that thicker is better, which we didn't really cover that in our no. laminate conversation, but it is true. Um, you know, but there, there are three components to think about, really. Um, the visual with some thinner face layers, you can't. Um, have sawn cut, so that creates a certain visual difference. Um, the cost of the product, of course, and the typical, can I sand it and refinish it? Which is a question that sometimes drives me crazy, but Carrie's gonna cover that as well. Um, because, you know, I know we know a lot of people in the industry, we know obviously everyone's got flooring in their home. I don't know anyone that sands and refinishes no. on site, unless you buy a heritage home and you wanna preserve some, you know, right. 80 year old yeah. hardwood floors that are there. Right. Yeah, so the talk about so veneer thicknesses. So three millimeter and four millimeter would be considered premium. And as Kim talked about, that's the, the sawn cut has to be. Two millimeter is very common on the thinner total structures, but the performance differences are very virtually non-existent. But one of the key things, as Kim just mentioned, is can this be refinished? How many times can it be finished? Well, recently the NWFA, which is the governing body or kind of the wood experts, the National Wood Flooring Association that we rely on for to help set the standards to keep a level playing field and manufacturing across the continent, they have recently set refinished minimums. So if as long as the face layer or veneer or lamellum, as we've referred to, is greater than two and a half millimeters thick, it can be sanded and refinished. Uh, two millimeters, in theory, can be sanded and refinished one to two times. A three millimeter wear layer can be sanded and refinished two to three times. And then four to six mil, that's very thick, for, uh, can be done three to six times. And I know that from a dealer's point of view, this is probably a more common question than questions we're asked because we're in the business of selling finished flooring. But the whole process of sanding and refinishing is... It could be kind of quite messy. There's a lot involved. The factory finish finish that comes on the floors when we sell them is probably is far superior to any refinish that can be done after. And the current the factory finished floors that we sell allows us to have really nice character. So they're not going to sand anything and smooth it out. So that's why I think even if people really some people may sand and refinish their floors once because they're changing a color or realizing they want to. But I would suspect that it's usually their last time because it's in many cases, it just makes more sense to replace the floor. So don't be sanding, selling, sanding and refinishing. Try and sell new floors and that benefits our dealers and everyone. So the additions to uh, other products and concerns and things to be aware of with are the environmental controls and certifications. So with any manufactured floor, there's layers um, like laminate. All flooring products have some VOCs or volatile organic compounds, and they're at different concentrating levels. Well, floor score and then CARB2, floor score has set in place an off-gassing measurement that looks at 35 different compounds, and they set a maximum standard. We meet or exceed, or we're either at or much below the standards, to, and at the same time, just because it's floor score and they're allowed a 0.05 uh, micrograms per cubic feet, milligrams, that doesn't mean our floors have that. In some cases, we might not that's have just any gas. Right? That's, the, that's the maximum. So floor score is the most recognized and it's third party certified. This isn't something we do. It's sent and controlled by labs. And then we also do audits and double check some of like the products just to ensure that it's consistent. So you can be rest assured if you're selling a fusion floor, it's safe. Um, CARB2 is another 
certification that we briefly touched on, and that's one you'll see with plywood cores, and it's just set, it just tests the emissions of formaldehyde. So it happens, it's tested on plywood as well as HDF and MDF boards, which is more of a common core in laminate. Um, and that's a 0 0.05 parts per million. All of the numbers are slightly different measurements, but that's just for to make it confusing. However, they all are generally basically test the same thing. Um, TCSA, Title V1, Canfer, they're all the same tested standard as CARP2. So if you see any one of those three labels, they all mean the same thing. Yeah, and CANFER really is the Canadian government's um, equivalent of those programs that already had existed, starting with CARB2, moving up to a TSA Title V1, right. um, and then the Canadian government to follow those standards and implement last January. Yeah, first. Jan, 2023. Um, and as an importer, we're required to document and um, sure, report to the government as well. Yeah. yeah, so and then in addition, something that's a new standard that's coming up more common, starting to creep up is Green Guard Gold. It's also an equivalent to the floor score numbers, and it tests just a few more elements in compounds in it, but the total VOC requirement is the same. So any of those labels mean essentially the same thing. Um, in addition, there's an E1, that's a European emission standard. Um, it's they all test, it's just another version of a similar test from a different part of the world. And then I know we're talking about wood, but there's CRI Green Label Plus, that's more carpet. You'll see it on our carpet tiles and even our some of our under cushions or under layman products. That's just the equivalent test of floor score for soft surface, so. So country of origin, where is it made and does it matter? Um, the reality is it's, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it's produced all over the world, fusion product. We um, have done a, a great job, I think, at uh, diversifying our mix. And um, we have a mix in our product assortment of product from China, from Southeast Asia, from Europe, um, nothing domestically. But there are good and bad producers all over the world. Um, including in North America. So it's not really a country of origin question. Does it matter? The people that it matters to is the government because that tells you how much tax you pay. But Absolutely. you know, generally besides that, it's not um, a product or performance kind of question. Right. Yeah, there's multiple different installation methods and we have a product for each one. Different installations are typically dictated by the subfloor or the construction of the engineered floor. So when installing based on the recommendations, all of the flooring will perform similarly. So I had touched on it earlier, the different methods are, to, there are different methods to mechanically fasten the floor. That's like attach it to the ground using basically fasteners. So nails or cleats and staples, depending on the core. And we also offer a full collection for click. And that's most commonly used for floating. It's available, they use that a lot in, when there's a concrete subfloor, you can't really you can't nail into concrete, so that's the perfect alternative so it's to float. And as a overall, we, all, we also have recommend glue assist, and that's a combination of some adhesive to go with the mechanically fastened floor, and that really just contributes to a quieter floor. And only on products of a certain... Six inches and wider. Okay, and this is just a brief description to show how to glue assist. This comes up regularly. So really, just to reiterate, it's not a requirement, but when you glue assist, especially the wider planks, it's it's really just for just for quiet and it's a higher just quality movement. installation. It just stops movement, which is the only cause. Sound is created by movement. And then maintenance. Maintenance and care is something that we all, it's extremely important. People are taking their education on maintenance from TV commercials and like household cleaners and what or their parents get the grocery store. Right, they just take it off their line. So, you know, Dawn dish liquid, it's for dishes, it's a degreaser, it's not for floors. So we offer a full collection of maintenance products and Fuse Clean Wood is our, the one we recommend most. And it's really important to make sure when selling the products, you know, some, some of these, it's like buying a car and not telling them how to take care of it. So, you know, cleaning it with the right product is as important as changing the oil of a vehicle. Never clean with vinegar, our, all of our products have a poly.
polyurethane or UV coating finish. It does not need wax or polish. Those are all products that can actually draw uh, soil and make the products look dirty. So, you know, talk your customers through this. It's really important. The other thing to remember is water is really not a wood's best friend. Water can damage wood. It can be absorbed into the floor if the house is too dry. It can be seeped into the bevels and it can cause the, the floors in the old days, which is why engineered really became a thing in addition to the yield and stuff. There were issues with cupping and crowning because the traditional solid wood is not as stable and or doesn't react as well to the most common household lifestyles but engineered floor is more stable it's more less likely to cup or crown based on the where the moisture is coming from but using a traditional mop and bucket and steam mops will can create the environment where your floor will cup and crown and create issues so don't steam mops are for ceramic tile not wood floors. I think steam mop is Carrie's least favorite word. word in the oh, I have nightmares <laughs> about steam mops. Anytime you're introducing heat and water to a wood floor, you're asking for trouble. So <laughs> sell lots of fused wood clean. We have it in stock. So color trends in wood, um, as this is, you know, kind of a lead into talking about some feature products that we'd like to cover today. Um, the major emerging theme um, in color and texture is colors that can be found in nature. So people always ask me this, even in my personal life, because they know what I do and they always want to, you know, can you sell me something? <laughs> Just always know, by the way. <laughs> they always ask, does that mean gray is dead? I said, the answer is no, um, but they're more shifting towards a natural um, grayish kind of color. It's more muted. You can see um, the Gutenberg is one of our new colors. It's still showing up in the top. These are the most popular colors in our new collections in the last six months that we have uh, we've launched. And you can see they're all very natural um, kinds of colors, colors you'd find in nature. And they, they go very well with almost anything in your yeah. house. That's a key. Yeah. And that builds well to the, the you don't need to refinish stores floors as much because most typically they're using a natural look, something that's going to be timeless and carry on. So the next we're going to talk about the fact that we have uh, a thickness and a product for every installation, every taste, every application. So we'll start with our half inch thick collections. We have multiple widths, multiple species. Uh, Casabella, it's a five inch by half inch by random length. Most of our products are random length and that just gives the more natural illusion, multiple planks, uh, multiple plank lengths, mm -hmm. just looks more authentic. So uh, we're not gonna show every half inch collection. Uh, no. We're gonna show you a feature collection um, that's a, a more recent launch, but mm -hmm. just to show you kind of how we segment our product as an example, so that we have all the widths and the styles and the species Right. So, yes, in every, so really in every what you're going to see is every construction, different widths, different rustic, different species, different colors. Um, our feature, our feature half inch collection is our newest launch. It's called Crema. Um, so Crema is a half inch, four colors, very natural colors. It's a very high grade. I was supposed to be the Vanna today for Carrie, but um, I think we're seeing a very small picture mm -hmm. of these samples. So it's probably more effective on screen, but I'll hold them up anyway, Gary. <laughs> right, and as you can see, the whole collection is quite natural looking. Ask your territory managers for samples. This is, you know, we've had great successes from immediately just launching it, so. And that brings the high grade to a, be, by having a higher grade finish on top, on a thinner core allows us to hit some better price points on what used to be traditionally like a considered select and better that's extremely, offered as an extreme premium price. Okay, and then on our spec sheets, you'll see the different layers, the specs. We have coordinating stair noses, um, treads, or stair noses, T-molds, and reducers for all of us. And relatively okay. low variation level. In this yes. As you can see, our little dial down there. Yeah. Okay, and we also have most popular, so our 5 8 and 9 16 collections. That kind of fits in between the half inch and three quarter. Again, random lengths. We offer herringbone and chevron in our artistry collection that complements the Costello colors. There's some overlap. And then we have a various assortment of um, rustic to clean, which is our latest, the one I'm going to talk about next. Very rustic and everything in between. 
Um, Whistler's Village is what we've just mostly recently launched in a 916, and it's a very, very clean. It's uh, similar to the crema, but a different construction and thickness. Um, you can see a theme though that um, natural, very natural, clean. Yeah. These yeah. are probably our two cleanest product. Yes, and then next to that would be canvas, but these are even the next level clean. Okay. Again, probably easier to see the colors on the screen because my Vanna job is not very good. Right, and each <laughs> screen shows a different one. So talk to your rep, ask to see the samples. They're beautiful. And there's the spec sheets. You'll see, get familiar, we have the same sales tools and information available for all of our collections. That's very comprehensive, helps with price pointing, everything to help understand what's being sold. Um, in addition to that, you'll see we have kind of the most three quarter collections and that goes, the reason for that is Ontario and Canada is very much a three quarter market and that stems from typically solid wood was three quarter inches thick. So for a replacement market, three quarter inch, take out what's there, replace it with three quarter inch. And helpful when you're butting up against tiles. Absolutely. And it's in those circumstances, but so that's why we seem to, we have the most. Uh, but again, different species, different colors, different styles, the width. sky's limit, different yeah. widths. Mm -hmm. um, you know, different pro different finishing textures and even different uh, color technologies. Some are fumes, some are stains, some are a combination of both. But that's one benefit by where we produce it from. We have the opportunity to have all kinds of really beautiful and very specific production and ways to finish it. Um, patina is, yep. we're going to, Patina is one of our next uh, collections that we're going to feature. Um, the, what's we have two of, for three quarter, right? So right. you went sort of extreme here, right. Patina being a very rustic. Oh, yeah, and Nouveau Renaissance, slightly mm -hmm. less rustic, but also very... Uh, I can see I'm not a very good fan. Okay. I'm showing the wrong one. <laughs> there's a reason you're not on Wheel of Fortune. That's right. Yes, there's a reason. Okay, now Patina, what's neat about Catina is you can use less space in your showrooms. We offer, there's crossover of six of the colors are available in, in both six inch width and seven and a half inch width. Subtle difference, some people really want the wider plank of seven and a half inch, so we offer both. They're marked accordingly, and the patina is one of our more rustic collections. It's got a three millimeter sawn wood face layer, and the colors are, can't be beat. Everyone there loves goes. this collection, so if you haven't sold it, yeah, it's doing, very, it's very, doing very, very well. And again, you can see it's a nice cross-reference of lights to darks, natural. So, and multiple widths. The next feature collection, and here is again, just the cell sheet and we have room scenes available of all of our products. The next collection is Nouveau Renaissance. This is a kind of Renaissance updated. Renaissance version two, bigger and better. Yeah, and three quarters mm -hmm. thicker. And, you know, again, it shows, it's a beautiful feeling of, of like Renaissance, the colors, the texture, wide planks. It's a wonderful product, eight and a half inch wide, which is extra. It's we only have our widest product is 10 inches. So eight and a half when it's installed, it looks beautiful with some nice character and um, just so this would feeling. be considered a mid character product. Yes. And this collection really hit the ground running. Our, our, the Renaissance collection, the original Renaissance was one of our best sellers over, um, over its lifespan with Fusion. Right. Um, so it did become sort of a, a Fusion anchor, right. Fusion identity kind of product. So when we were redoing the collection, we kept the Renaissance as part of it. And it does cover sort of the traditional and modern. Right, and a key, one of the main differences that we did when we kind of updated it was the old Renaissance collection had a couple natural oils in there, which is, you know, for wood experts, there's nothing better. It's easy. It's something that can be maintained and polished and changed. However, and, it's beautiful. and it looks beautiful. However, it requires maintenance and kind of a real trained artist. Um, our Nouveau Renaissance has a more kind of real friendly finish and with the poly UV poly cured polyurethane that is just what's more acceptable, almost maintenance free. You just have to keep it clean. Uh, 
uh, here's the list of the colors. We carried over a couple from the old collection, Modern Damask and Gallery Louvre, and then added some that were missing, but the real, the pictures don't exactly do it justice, but it's, yeah, you'll like them. Here's another cell sheet with the corresponding moldings and all of the specs. You can see some of the character in the in the room scenes, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then really just to show that we're never, at Fusion, we're never sitting, watching, waiting, watching the market. We've always got stuff in our pipeline of new introductions. We're always working on the next up and coming trends in both color and size and texture. Uh, we've got a couple of new collections coming. One's Velvet Grove, and it'll be with a corresponding herringbone. I'll show you a couple, a couple of pictures after, but I'll quickly touch on them. We're coming out with a new Beaux Arts too. Beaux Arts was our wide and long, absolute like uh, luxury program, so we're updating that. <laughs> and then Northern Escapes, kind of a spin on the high rustic real escape, as well as updating some colors of our key and really popular collections, Canvas, Outer Banks, Elite, Demure, Imperial, Coastline, and Casabella. Here's just a little picture of what some of the Velvet Grove colors are. And keep in mind, this is going to have planks with corresponding or complementary herringbones. So is the herringbone available in all of the colors? Yes, Here, it's yeah. an example exact match all colors and the reason for that is you know sometimes herringbone it's great for a feature it can be made as even an insert or inlay in the middle of a room and framed with the straight planks or the whole it can be one room versus the rest of the house but the colors will be the same through and to keep it easy from the sales point of view the color names are the same it just adds the word herringbone to the s so just you know we try to keep in mind how it's being sold to to make it easy um, Beaux Art 2, here's just some examples of the beautiful colors that are coming your way. We just wanted to take the opportunity to let you know that these are in the works too, even though they're not quite ready, just because we don't get in front of an audience all that often. And especially with Beaux Art, um, it really was sort of a flagship product, being our only 10 and a quarter. Um, if any of you have ever been to our showroom, you see it's on the wall, it's on the floor, it's everywhere here. So it's a, a product that we feel really strongly about. If any of you watched the Sarah Richardson um, presentation yeah, yesterday, she actually used it in her Whistler Lodge. So mm -hmm. it looks beautiful and uh, it just needed a refresh. So this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, and one of the colors you'll see there seems to be it's like an up and coming trend that's a little difficult is having the right rich brown. Um, I think I think we finally got it. <laughs> so and um, it's probably six versions. Yes, it's been that's, to get it right. So seemingly this it should be the easiest color, but to get the right one, that's been it's a challenge. And actually at the, it's probably the most difficult show, color. Yeah, we've see we saw a couple of them and you're, it's perfect. Um, and then Northern Escape. Northern Escape is Northern Retreat's big brother, sort of. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, With richer colors, uh, very stable finish, and you know, lots of rust rustic textures and colors. It's beautiful. The darkest dark one in there. When you get it, you'll see the the. the it's a different process on how it's finished and the color goes right throughout. So with dark dark products and dark woods, you know, that can be a concern. And if you scratch it, then you'll see the wood underneath. Or like me, you drop your central back on it, take a chunk out. Right. That chunk, you know, it won't be as visible. Like there, it's the colors throughout. And that's one of, that's also a beauty key feature with most, even our smoke products is yes. the colors, not just on the surface. So with that, I think, if there's any questions about it all, if anybody yeah. has any questions, if not, we're always available um, yeah. to be contacted by email or by phone. We're always happy to talk product any day, any time. Yeah. Um, not in the middle of the night, even though we like to show <laughs> it. It depends on your mind, but we might not answer our phone. But anytime, um, especially with hard week, we love to talk about it. So. Thank you very much for um, attending. We appreciate your time. Um, we appreciate your business and uh, thank you very much.